So you're looking to start your very own YouTube channel, but you're not sure how to optimize your channel for the YouTube algorithm. Well, no worries, because that's exactly what we're going through in today's video. I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on absolutely everything that you need to do. And on top of that, I'm also giving you access to some free resources, which will save you even more time. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So as you can see from my screen, I've created a brand new YouTube channel called Coaching Agency Example. And with this, I've gone for a few little things just because it's easier to set up off camera than on camera, but I'll explain exactly what I did on each of those sections. So with this, we've got absolutely nothing, no content, there's no post, there's no live streams, no play, there's absolutely nothing. So what we wanna go and do is get this channel ready. Got no logo, no banner, we'll get all of that sorted. But firstly, what we need to do is head bottom left where we're able to go and find settings. We'll click that and the whole point here is to go through each and every single one of these tabs. So under general, we have our currency. This does not matter unless you're monetized because this will be the currency that you're able to see whenever you're earning money with your CPM, your RPM, it'll all be set to this currency. I said this to be my local currency, but you can just go through and drop down this and go and find what you're looking for. So if you're looking for your US dollar, that is there right at the bottom. One thing that I will highlight, and this isn't anything to do with optimizing your YouTube channel, but if you're thinking about joining a YouTube course, there may be quite a few gurus out there that will say, hey, I've been able to earn this amount of money from YouTube. And what a lot of the time happens is instead of using US dollar, they will scroll up and they'll go and select the Jamaican dollar, which is still the exact same symbol, but a conversion from US dollar to Jamaican dollar is quite substantial. So it'll appear as if they're earning thousands of dollars every single day from YouTube, when in actual fact they're earning next to nothing. So just be careful with that, but that's where you can go and change that within your currency. Going down, we have our channel, and this is where things get a bit more important, although within our basic info, not so much. You wanna select your country of residence, and under keywords, you just wanna put keywords which are relevant to what your channel topic is. Does this matter? No, not really. In fact, there's a section under tags as you go and create videos where just above there is a sentence which says tags and keywords don't really play that much of a role. It used to, years ago, used to do keyword cramming. It doesn't really work anymore. I do this out of habit because as we go and create a channel, it takes just a few minutes to go and put a few keywords which relate to my topic in which I try and max this section out. And then from there, I never have to do it again. But just know that some people put emphasis on this of if you change a keyword, you'll be able to go viral. No, if I go and change dollar here to be coach, that doesn't suddenly mean that now I'm going to be able to go viral with my content. It still comes down to the videos and the value that you provide to your target audience. There are some important things under this section. So if we go away from basic info and go over to advanced, we need to make sure that no, set this channel as not made for kids. If you do not select this within your advanced settings, you'll need to select this as part of every other video that you upload. It takes just a second, but can be time consuming as you keep on doing this and uploading videos, hopefully for the next few years. So just put that as no set this as not made for kids. The other stuff really comes down to preference. A lot of people believe you need to link your Google ads account in order for you to earn money from the platform by the time you are accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, you do need to link your account, but you don't do it here. This is if you're actually gonna be going through and running ads through YouTube, but it's not really needed for most people. The most important thing is under feature eligibility. Now, by default, the second that you create a YouTube channel, you will have standard features unlocked, but for you to unlock the additional features, you need to verify your account. In order for you to do this, you must submit your phone number where they'll send a code across and then you pull it through. And for advanced features, you may need to take a picture of your ID and then also do the phone thing with your face just to show that you are you. With this, if you're creating loads of YouTube channels, you can only submit, I think, two codes per year to one single phone number. But in most cases, if this is just your first time, it's fine but you need to do this. Reason four, videos over 15 minutes, custom thumbnails, which are vital nowadays. Live streaming is, 
I was going to say a quick hack, but it's not so much quick as you need to sit there for a few hours and live stream, but it's a great way for you to build up your watch time if you are trying to get into the YouTube Partner Program. And then with your advanced features, it increases the amount of videos that you're able to push at any given moment, which also helps massively. So this is vital. Another thing which is also a smart idea to do is go through your upload defaults. Now with upload defaults, this is what you'll be able to see every single time you upload a video. So right now you'll see that I don't have anything in my title because that'll change on a video by video basis. But I've put a few things in my description. This is things that will never change on my description within a video by video basis. So book your free YouTube consultation call here. This is gonna be in the top line of my description and it should be the same for you. Whatever your call to action is for your business, you need to include that link within your description. And then do a main description brackets. This is just me leaving enough space for me to write a main description for that video. That will change on a video by video basis. But underneath this, I've got a few links which are affiliate links and any type of products that I have. And then also link any suggested videos. And then under this, I have some call to actions in terms of socially for the video itself or any engagement. And then I also include any hashtags. All of this will stay the same on a video by video basis. And then what I'll do when I upload a video is add various parts to this. So I will go through and I will write out a description. So this will be a full description for that video, no matter what it is. For this video, as we're going through optimization, I'll talk about the importance of optimizing a YouTube channel. I'll then link any relevant videos underneath here, and then also go through and apply a link from the video and then just go and put it there. This is just small little things. It's not gonna do anything too crazy, but it does save you a lot of time as you're going through this on a video by video basis. I set the visibility to be private and you could also go and write out tags for every single video, but how I write my descriptions is I do go through and select tags specifically and then I copy and paste all of those tags up here and then write my description from each word so that I know all my keywords that were included in tags are within the description. But just remember, and I said it earlier, tags don't play that much of a role in growing on YouTube. It's just out of habit that I still do this. And just like what we have under basic info, we could go under advanced settings and also set this to be video language, English, title and description language to be English, category to be whatever it is that you want depending on what your business in a lot of cases you're probably either going to go entertainment education maybe how to and style potentially people and blogs that might be the best in terms of building a personal brand uh, and then of course under video language and video titles uh, you're going to want to scroll down and you're going to go and want to put this to go and be english and also do the exact same thing again to go and put this to be english and then just go through and make sure everything else here under comments is exactly what you want it to be. I normally hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. This is just because there is a lot of spam. And even though there's still quite a bit of spam that does get through, this also holds quite a bit as well. It's not as bad as what it could be. So just go through that. You don't want to hold all comments for review because that would be a lot, especially once you start growing. So just let YouTube do its thing and hold any spam any type of very abusive language just holds all of that for you so that you don't need to worry about it. The final part in which most people will use at some point is permissions. Now permissions is broken down into two sections dependent on your channel. It can be confusing, but for some of you, you may have a YouTube personal account and others you may have a YouTube brand account. This is a YouTube brand account. So that allows me to manage permissions on a brand account, which will then be a Google account, as well as manage it through YouTube. If you only have a YouTube personal account, you will only be able to manage permissions through the YouTube studio. The difference is not really too much. It really just comes down to what you're trying to do. There's not many channels that need a Google page anymore. And it's just a case of there being a brand account, which is connected to a Google page. But with this section, if you are looking to go and bring on an editor, maybe a thumbnail designer, maybe someone as a strategist or a channel manager, you will then add them into your permissions to be those roles in which they'll have access to your YouTube channel and can complete various tasks without you needing to send over your email address and password. 
This is something that we do all the time with our clients where they'll add our email addresses to their channels and then we'll go through, upload videos for them, create the content, we'll create thumbnails, write out descriptions, publish the video, analyze the video, report back, do absolutely everything in terms of management. And speaking of which, if you are interested in booking your very own free consultation call with me so that we can hit the ground running with your YouTube channel, there is a link in the top line in the description. Book your free consultation call there. The other tabs that we have here is community. This is where if you're going to have any moderators, not really needed that much in terms of YouTube content, but if you're going to be doing live streams, having moderators is a great way for you to reward your fan base, plus also for them to actually moderate the chat for those who can actually come through and say, hey, you're being inappropriate, get banned, which saves you from having to go and do it. The other stuff, created demographics and also agreements really comes down to once you get to a certain point. So you could take surveys, but with agreements, this will be once you are finally hitting the requirements for the YouTube Partner Program, you can apply it and you'll see all your agreements listed here. So we'll save that and then we'll go back. So this is now done for our YouTube settings, but we're still not done in terms of optimizing the channel because there's another section to this. This is where we now need to go all the way over to customization. We'll click this and this allows us to change the layout of our YouTube channel, go for our branding and also go for our basic info. We're first gonna go over to our basic info. This is where you'll need to select your channel name, Mine is Cogency Agency example, but this will be your business name or it will be your own name. So for me, it will be Jamie O's, which is what this other channel that you're currently watching is called. And it's the best way to go about it. With your handle, you want it to be similar to your name so that it's somewhat linked. Now your handle and name are different. Anyone can have the exact same name as you, but only one person at any given moment can have the exact same handle. So this is what will be included within your YouTube URL once you get to a suitable size. So you can see here, www.youtube.com slash app coaching agency example, which is exactly what we have here. Just below this, we also have our description. This is where you just need to write out a quick description explaining a bit about you or a bit about your business. So I'm just gonna go and copy and paste that in there. It doesn't need to be too long. Not many people actually go through the about section to read, but this is now also included within your YouTube homepage. You do just want to get like the first sentence or two, which does tell you exactly what you're all about. And then below this, we have our, well, we have our channel URL, which is separate to that. You'll actually have two, but the more important thing is the links. So this is where you do want to go and link to whatever services as well as other social media accounts you have. So the more important one is your business. So for me, I have got my own landing page, which I'm just going to copy and paste across. And for this, I'm just going to go and say, grow your channel. And then I'll have that as a link within my YouTube header, which we'll go through in a second. But you can add as many different links as you want from here. So you can go and do a Twitter one. You can go and put Instagram. You can go and do Facebook. I say Twitter, but it's called X now. I think it's been an X for a year, but I'm still not used to it. And you could just go through and link what they're, what pretty much what you want. I highly recommend trying to limit this as much as possible. Maybe do your service and then also include your link because you do not want to throw too many links in your audience face. And then finally below this, you also have your email address, which it is worth putting in. You will have people reach out for you for lots of spammy stuff, but you also get loads of people will reach out for sponsorships, which may be directly linked to what you're trying to do. And that's extra money. So it's still worth going through. Just don't pull it as your main email address. This is another one which we put together just so that it goes elsewhere and I could just go through filter what's good, what's bad. And it doesn't go through with all my client email addresses and absolutely everything else, which certainly saves me a lot more time. From here, we're then gonna head all the way over back to layout in which the layout is fairly simple. What you want to do, and we can't do it with this one because this channel doesn't have any content, but you will want to add a channel trailer, which will be your most popular video. You can have a dedicated video to your channel to tell you what your channel is all about. I've never really done that. I've always gone and set that as a specific video. So on this channel that you're currently watching, it is the ultimate beginner's guide to building a personal brand that gives you value. Plus also it tells you a bit about who I am and what this channel is about. I normally go and do that for both of these videos. 
Underneath here, you'll then have a section which will be your YouTube shorts as well as videos. You will want to go and change this. Popular videos, you want to go and bring to the top. There's this psychology thing where people enjoy going for the thing that's most popular. So this actually happens quite a bit within restaurants where they'll say this is the most popular dish and it tends to be the most popular dish because people believe it to be the most popular dish. Whereas if they were to go and say chef's choice, people don't really care about that, even if it was the exact same dish. Lots of stuff has been done on this. So having popular videos, I normally go and do at the top and then go and bring videos. And then sometimes I'll go and do single playlists. This channel hasn't got anything, but we'll have a single playlist for how to grow on YouTube or how to go and create content on YouTube, whatever it is that links to your service and your personal brand. And then finally, once you're finished with this, we then go over to Brandon and this is where you'll need to upload your channel art. This time it's slightly different. So you will need to go and add a picture in which it's worth going through. And I've got an optimization one and I've got a logo picture here. If you're building a personal brand, it's good to have a professional picture of yourself. This one is a random account. So I've just gone and put together this, but you'll then be able to go and have your image there or you're going to have your logo in which you're just going to go and save that. Now, what's interesting is we can actually go and publish this. There is an option for a banner here, but nowadays you don't actually need it. So if we were to go back to our channel, it now will show, or it hasn't actually updated the logo yet, but it will eventually show that we have a logo and there is no banner at the top, but that's perfectly fine. We still get all our information. We still have our links that we linked earlier. We still have our about section. And once we do start uploading videos, we'll have the layout for the channel. There's not this empty space where a banner would be. So if you want to speed this up, you don't even need to create a banner when first starting. In fact, a banner doesn't have as much importance as what it used to. It used to be the case that you would have a banner and then in the bottom corners, you would then have your links to whatever it is that you did put in the about section but that has all been moved. So it doesn't even provide as much value. If you are wanting to go and change your banner, of course, you'll need to go back. So we'll go YouTube Studio. We'll go back to customization. We'll then go over to branding in which we'll then need to upload. Now, it gets confusing with this because it will tell you the size of what at least it needs to be, but that's not the correct size. What you need to understand is with your banner, you will have your view, like a full view, which is viewable on TV. You will then have it on desktop and then you also have it viewable on all devices so that you need to optimize your channel art to be within those sizes. Now, if that sounds too much, don't worry. I said this video is including free resources in which there is a link in the description down below where you can claim a free YouTube branding pack. This is what I put together. And that's why this says insert picture here, because you can create your very own channel art with this. Change the colors. It's got the layout in which is already needed so that you don't need to worry about where things go. You just need to go through and change what's there. So with this, we've created our channel art and we'll just go and press done and it's all good. That'll be added. We then finally have a watermark in which you can upload yet again. And a lot of people will either go and take their logo picture and just have that added. Or my recommendation is that you go and take subscribe, go and put that down and then also go and put this to entire video just as like an additional call to action for people to hit that subscribe button. And there you go. All you need to do now is press publish. And if it's updated and we've given it enough time, we can actually go through, go and click your channel. And there we go. It has finally been added. So you can see what a banner would look like if it was added. But just remember, if we were to go and take this away, it really doesn't change anything. It just means that everything else from this point here goes up rather than there being a banner at the top. A banner really good for branding. And then also, if you do have any promotional offers for seasonal offers or anything like that with your business, you can have your banner to have those as part of a call to action. But that's all you need to do in terms of optimizing your YouTube channel. That is absolutely everything. Once it's done, you never really need to worry about it. Again, you may change your upload defaults with your description as your offer changes. But other than that, nothing else will change. If you are needing some additional help and guidance with your YouTube channel, then feel free to book a call using the link in the description down below. The first call is entirely free. And what we go through is a full plan of action so that you can hit the ground running as you build your personal brand 
and your YouTube business. So if you're interested, link can be found in the description down below. But anyway, thanks for watching.